Hi, this is Tom Broussard. It's nice to see everyone. Today I am talking about uh, John Hulins Jackson, the father of British neurology. Um, he lived and died in the London area uh, from 1835 to 1911. Um, he is quite an amazing scientist and physician. Um, he uh, was also very smart <laughs> when he was young. He became a doctor um, when he was 29, as a physician when he was 29. Um, it is really quite amazing. If you saw the picture at the very beginning, uh, he looks like, they say, the father of English neurologists. He also looks like the uh, father of, of Christmas because of the big, big beard that he had. Um, but he worked on epilepsy, seizures, and aphasia over over many, many years, um, as always, 30, 40 years. It is amazing that these scientists, many of the scientists that I have been talking about, all live to be uh, late 70s, 80s, even 90s, uh, and continue to work all along the way. Uh, one in particular uh, scientist that's still coming up, um, she is still alive, and she is 103, I think, um, and was doing work well into her 90s. Um, so it is amazing that even in the older, old days, uh, people do li live for a long, long time and continue to do their work. But in his case, he uh, really worked hard on those particular two things, obviously having an awful lot to do with the brain. So when it came to epilepsy, it had to do with the brain and where it is in the, in, the, in, the, in the brain, where it's located in the brain, as well as aphasia and the location of that of the uh, of the damage to a stroke that yields you with aphasia, depending again on where it is in the brain. Um, but he describes, and I made quite a few quotes here. But he describes epilepsy as the name for occasional, sudden, excessive, rapid, and local discharge of, of grade of grade matter. Um, basically, the uh, the shock of all of that with the uh, with the uh, Caesar. Um, and obviously studying them and, and other scientists coming right behind them, starting to uh, able to do brain surgery and looking for what was causing those seizures. And then if possible, being able to um, cut off those little bits, uh, which you've got to see earlier uh, scientists um, to get rid of this seizure. So um, it is very interesting. Um, and in his, the other part is the aphasia part. And he said, Words and sentences lose their individual meaning if single words can be strictly said to have any meaning and the whole sentence becomes a unit, not a word heap. Um, in my case, after I had my stroke and aphasia, I began to think, why is it that I can read individual words? But if you put them together, I couldn't read them anymore. Um, and many of you have seen my uh, various presentations where in fact, while walking down the street, looking at all kinds of signs out on the street, I could see the individual words. Stop sign, I understood that. Speed limit, I understood that. But then I'd find longer words, particularly at churches, and one in particular where I walk past almost every day. Um, if you put those simple words together, quote, all of a sudden I couldn't know what they were. And that too is a large part of what I found out as a result of Jackson's work. Um, when I mentioned there that the, the sentence becomes a, hun a unit, not a word heap, um, he talks about the fact that he says back then they used to think that we think in words. Um, and he says, um, but no one had considered that words might disappear in the unity of a sentence, still less that behind the sentence might be a general verbal, what he referred to it as proposition. So um, what he did the work, um, and he did a lot of observ uh, observations with his uh, patients, um, so he could see the difference as if he was looking at me, and I could see these individual words, but if he put them together, two words I could still understand, three, it got more difficult. Um, beyond that, it sort of went away, it became a, a haze. And why is there such a haze when you can actually read the individual words? And I think it's because once 
the into uh, the units of speech into sentences, all of a sudden they become the unit. The sentence becomes the unit of speech. So the individual words don't mean a lot in terms of saying, oh, I'm saying a sentence, so I must think about I am saying this word in the sentence. It doesn't really work like that. As he said here, um, uh, he, Jackson proposed that single words are meaningless, and so is any unrelated succession of words. The unit of speech is a proposition. It therefore, the loss of power to, to uh, propositalize, um, hence we do not use the expression that the speechless word lost, uh, sp speechless man lost words, but that he has lost those words which serve in speech. In brief, speechlessness does not mean, does not mean entire wordlessness. And that's exactly what happened with me. I knew the words. I still couldn't read those words if they were put together into a sentence. So I, though I couldn't speak, speechless, I could understand the words themselves and I certainly could understand them on the inside. Um, so that again is how this guy Jackson almost, almost 200 years ago had figured this out, wrote it down, studied, other people like me, people with stroke and aphasia, and came to understand that the words is one thing, but when we build up our our language, uh, the the uh, the way we speak is with sentences, and the words begin to disappear, which is why I couldn't read them anymore. And I did get better because I kept looking at a particular book, every looking at every word. And it would get faster. I read them over and over and over. And when you do it repetitively, it goes. It does get faster physically as well as in the in the brain. So I kept reading them longer and longer and longer and longer until I could have the memory, because that's part of it too, of remembering. I am writing this sentence. 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 And all of a sudden. Um, with enough speed, those words come into this stream of consciousness, which uh, James has talked about too, um, because it is this stream of consciousness, not the stream of individual words um, that become the consciousness, but in fact, in fact, the stream of those words going forward. Um, uh, Jackson, uh, I'll say, unfortunately, not really, he was incredibly smart he wrote lots of material, um, but he was much more interested in serving his patients than he was with being the scientist that everybody should know who he is uh, and become famous in his own life. So a, a lot of his work didn't get very far in the uh, scientific literature and around Europe for that very reason. Um, he was much more interested in working with his patients. So it did take a long, long time for people to begin to understand um, what it was that he was uh, doing and how he could explain it. Um, apparently, uh, also, he wrote in a very difficult way, uh, you know, very um, going around the barn, which is people with aphasia do. Uh, but he really worked hard to make sure he was as precise as he could be. And as a result of being so precise, sometimes it can be quite uh, difficult to work through that thicket. Um, but, and as he said, uh, because a lot of people just wouldn't even talk with him or read his stuff because it was just too dense. Um, and you should all read it. it, it it's somewhat dense, uh, but especially if you happen to be stroke and aphasia person and you're able to read, you'll be able to say, oh, I can understand why this guy was being so precise, trying to help us understand it better. In words, you can understand. Uh, but as he said, it generally takes 25 years for truth to make its way around the world. And in his case, it took 125 years, but it did take a long time uh, to move into the modern neurology, which now today uh, the scientists uh, and physicians read and clearly understood what Jackson was talking about 150 years ago. Um, and as, as, as uh, Jackson said, um, because he was a peer of uh, Darwin, 
So they, they re read and worked at about the same time. And um, Jackson said, I say here too, uh, that just like uh, Charles Dar Darwin, who wrote, I have no great quickness, quickness of apprehension or wit. My power is to follow a long and purely abstract train of thought is limited, but I am superior in the common run of man in noticing things that easily escaped attention and in observing them carefully. And that is what Jackson did for 40 years, was really studying carefully um, his patients and watching every move, every gaze, uh, every gait, uh, studying them and understanding both with uh, epilepsy as well as aphasia and how it is that the brain does what it does to, uh, to uh, do what it does and then do it after. Um, uh, the damage from one brain injury uh, or another. Uh, but it took him uh, as much as Darwin, who lived famously uh, while still alive, Darwin, uh, after he wrote his books, um, Jackson had to wait for 125 years until the world knew who he was. Uh, and in the uh, neurology and aphasiology world, as I say, to hold... Uh, to take hold in this speechless, uh, but not wordless word, world of aphasia. So another great guy, you get to see the picture of the, of the uh, article that you'll see online, because uh, he really did look like uh, uh, Father Christmas. But have a good day today, and I'm looking forward to the next installment of the Science uh, and Scientist of Aphasia. Take care. Have a good week. I will see you soon. All right. Bye-bye.